Welcome to this info session about food safety and 3D printing. My professional experience at your service. Welcome to this video on food safety and 3D printing. I spent 15 years of my professional career as an engineer in the field of food packaging and machine sterilization. And I have decided to offer my advice on this quite complex subject. I've seen the question asked several times. Can I make Star Wars cookie cutters? Is it safe to print spoons or cutlery? And together with the questions, I've read all kinds of answers. Usually from popular wisdom or the Google University. It is important to notice that I'm offering advice for assessing the risk of using 3D printed items in contact with food. This does not replace your own judgment and does not constitute a statement that you can use if you run this type of business. In that case, I strongly suggest to engage a consultant or an expert to assess your specific process professionally. The short answer to the question, can 3D printed items be used in contact with food, is it depends. All cases are different. I want to provide the knowledge to support you in making your own decision. Having said that, let's dig into the subject. This video will touch on two subjects, microbiological safety and chemical safety. I will summarize conclusions in the end, in case I'm being too boring. Let's start with the most discussed topic, micro microbiological safety. Most of the advice I find only focuses on the what and rarely explains the why. So I will, I will take the risk of you navigating away from this video with a bit of science facts. Why should we worry about bacteria or mold in our food? There's two reasons. They spoil food and they produce toxins. Spoiled food is gross. Both taste and smell is altered together with food properties and often texture and consistency. Toxins instead are simply put poison. They are produced by bacteria when they find a suitable place to thrive. And this place is, is usually your food. They can cause all range of effects from mild to severe to fatal and can pass undetected by our senses or be produced by the little bastards inside our own bodies. Most of the dangerous bacteria are killed by a process called posterization, which is basically a process where they are heated usually above 70 degrees C for a few minutes. Some are instead heat resistant and they have to be killed by other kinds of sterilization instead. But the majority of them only spoil food or germinate in very specific conditions like absence of air or low acidity. Toxins are usually deactivated by heat but it is better to avoid having them in, in the food in the first place. A good starting point to get rid of bacteria, bacteria is cleaning. This is why your item should have as little crevices as possible, gentle radiuses and open structures. How much clean is clean? Believe it or not, even for professionals, as long as it is visually clean and not smelling funky, it is usually clean enough. But bacteria are not the only thing you should be worried about. The second subject is in fact chemical safety. While bacterial contamination is very quickly making you sick, chemical contamination is more subtle. Most chemical substance substances need to accumulate in your body for a long time before having an effect, and when they do, it is sometimes too late to take action. Since, since I like to split topics in twos, we will talk about materials first and manufacturing practices. When plastic is put in contact with food, chemical reactions may occur. These reactions may dissolve some of the substances from the plastic into the food. The speed at which these processes take place depends on the chemical affinity of the plastic and the food, the temperature at which this happens, and the time for which they stay in contact. Oil and fat, alcohol, water content are all solvents which will eventually extract stuff from the plastic into the food. Most people will claim that PLA is grass. What does grass mean? It means generally recognized as safe. And PLA is derived from plants and naturally produced by our body. So why should we be worried? We should be worried because the PLA in our filament spools is not only PLA. It is a mix of virgin PLA pigments and other chemical substances to increase different properties. This is what makes the different suppliers, well, different. 
So, is Virgin PLA safe then? Well, it depends. The second aspect of chemical safety is something called GMP. GMP stands for Good Manufacturing Practices, which is basically a set of rules to keep the material free from contamination of unwanted other pollutants like, for example, lubricants. Because we don't want lubricants in our food, right? Do you have a, an idea of how filament is made? I suggest you give a look at the video in the card up here to get the idea. Go, watch it now, I'll wait. Done? Good! I must say this, this looks pretty neat, manufacturing process. It is not a clean manufacturing process though. Any place of the process could release nasty chemicals onto the filament. The hopper, the mixer, the water tanks, the winding machine. And this is perfectly okay because this manufacturer is not selling food approved filament. And this is not a brandless Chinese or a known supplier they may, that may source the filament from some shady manufacturer. If you want to be sure that the filament you use is approved, you have to look for this logo. This will mean that the product is food contact approved. So I buy a food approved filament and I'm done. Not quite yet. You still have to make sure that your own machine is not releasing chemicals in the item. The nozzle may contain lead, the machine may spill lubricant, you may have sprayed hairspray or smeared glue on your machine. Okay, lots of topics and lots of things. Now it's time for a summary. First of all, design your items with gentle radiuses, thin walls, to avoid large volumes within fill and possibly avoid hard to reach crevices. If you can avoid the direct contact with your food, do so. For example, put some kitchen paper between your taco holder and your taco. Consider indirect contact as well. For example, these very cool toothpick holders. If you leave the pick for months in there, stuff may happen. Store it and put the picks in there only when you need to show this off to your friends. Seriously, you should. I will do it. And you have to print these egg cups. They rock. Second, use a reputable filament brand manufacturer. Use the crappy brandless pool for the baby Yoda prints. Clean your items as soon as you've finished using them. Do not let the food to dry and become all gunky. Pasteurize above 70 degrees C for like 10 minutes. For example, you can use water in a rice cooker. If you use the item seldom, I suggest to pasteurize it before putting it away and right before you need it again. If the material you're using is not suitable to withstand the temperature, you can use 60-65 degrees for half an hour. A lower temperature requires a much longer time. 60 degrees is the bare minimum temperature. And consider risky in industrial environments. Because it's so, just so you know. You can also disinfect with ethanol or kitchen disinfectant in case of doubts. In general, the bacterial risk is low if you use your item to prepare food that is cooked afterwards, like cookie cutters for example. If you see cracks or splits that start to appear, just print a new one. For what concerns the chemical risk, remember that it increases with contact time. Food containers, especially for fatty, alcoholic or moist food, should be avoided. If you really have to print one of these, make sure you use a food approved filament from a reputable supplier. Cookie cutters, again, could be okay since the contact time is very short. Finally, if you are in doubt, simply don't do it. Your health is more important than that Bronto ladle. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to post questions in the comments and I will try to answer the best of my knowledge. If you like what you see, punch that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell next to it if you want to get notifications of my next video. This is all for today. Until next time.